All right, boys and girls, your first step with your Romero Brito lesson is understanding and creating patterns. So in your art workbooks, you have two pages. The first one says, I can learn pattern, and it gives us several examples of patterns. Patterning with lines, patterning with shapes, patterns using color. It even says jumping jacks are a pattern and music has patterns. You can use this to get ideas as you recreate your Romero Brito piece. The second page in there says I can learn pattern, practice completing the pattern, color each pattern in when you are finished. So if you look at example one, we have circle, circle, square, circle, circle, square, and then we have three sections left to fill in. So I'm gonna repeat circle, circle, square. After I've done that, I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna work with color and create a color pattern within there. So I might go pink, purple, green. And then I want to repeat pink, purple, and green. And continue working to fill in my pattern with color, making sure that not only is my shapes making a pattern, but my colors are creating that pattern as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish mine while you work on yours. Okay, so I have completed my pattern page. Again, yours does not need to look like mine in terms of color, but what we should see is that the fill in the blanks match. So we did this one together and we drew a circle, a circle, and a square. On line two, you should have drawn a star and a rectangle. Line three, you should have drawn a triangle and then a square. And on line four, you should have drawn a circle, a circle, and a heart. And this was a very simple color pattern. This one was a little bit mixed. Orange, yellow, pink, pink, orange, yellow, pink. And then my hearts were pink, pink, and then purple, yellow, purple, pink, pink, purple, yellow, purple, pink. Really got a little bit tricky on that one. Yours don't need to be that tricky with color, just practicing and making sure you're creating patterns. We can use this and this as reference when we're filling in patterns in our drawing. So we are going to create a Romero Brito styled butterfly. So to do so, you wanna have a piece of paper and we wanna work with it wide in landscape direction. And then I'm gonna put my fingers at the top and I'm gonna go about two fingers down and I'm gonna start with a circle. Remember I draw with Sharpie, you can draw with pencil so you can erase if you make mistakes. I'm going to create an oval for my butterfly's body. I'm going to come out to make my wings. So from the middle, I'm gonna come out on either side. like so. And then up top. Curve them around. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and divide my space, my background up with some lines. Remember, we're working with Romero Brito and he often broke his areas up with different lines so he had sections to fill in. Your lines do not need to be exactly like mine. Similar, but not exact. It's fine. 
once you have this drawing complete. If you have a Sharpie, you can outline yours with Sharpie. If you do not have a Sharpie, then you'll do your outlining at the end because we know when we color with markers like these, if I outline with black and color yellow next to it, for example, my yellow gets dirty from the black marker and it starts to create green. So if you are gonna outline in a marker like this, you want to do it at the end. Because I've drawn in Sharpie, I'm ready to go and I'm gonna show you what to do with coloring. So Romero Brito was all about patterning in his sections and big, bold, bright colors. You can work with crayons, you can work with markers, either one are fine. And I like to start with some lighter colors and I like to fill in an entire section. Then I can go in with a darker color over the top to add my pattern on top. I find it easier this way. I can draw my pattern and then color around my shapes later. That is always an option. Now one of the things that Romero Brito always did in his work, or always does I should say because he is a living artist, is he colored and used his initials to create a pattern. So for me, my initials are CJ. So I can come in here and I can fill all of this section in with my initials. So it's the first letter of my first name and the first letter of my last name. And he always did his signature or initials to create a pattern. He also always had at least one heart in his work. So whether he used hearts as a pattern or hid a heart within his picture, he always had hearts. So I think I'm going to do some orange hearts in this wing. Okay, now this one I chose to draw with a lighter color. So I think I'm gonna color around it with a darker color. And I'm gonna come in, I like to outline. It allows me to color a little bit faster inside my spaces, but then I don't color onto my hearts as much because I've got a line or an area to stop at. And again, you can work with crayons or markers as you do this. Some areas can be left just as a solid color, but we want the majority to have some kind of a pattern in them. making them big, bold, bright, and colorful. Um, I'm gonna do a section of stripes. I just wanna show you the difference with your markers. So I'm gonna do blue and green stripes. So if you have the thicker markers like these, they have a skinny tip and a wider side to them. So I'm going to do some skinny blue lines in this section and I'm just holding my marker straight up and down to use the tip. On this side, I want to use some thicker blue lines. So by putting the marker on its side, I can create thicker stripes. And then I can come in here and I can fill this in with green so that I get blue and green stripes. And on this one, I'm gonna fill it in with green also. But you'll notice these are thinner. So I have blue, green, and white stripes. I can leave some areas white as long as they create and fill in the rest of my pattern. So these are just a couple examples. You can go ahead and work on yours at your own pace, filling it in, creating your own patterns. You can use this and this to help you and copy some of those patterns if you run out of ideas.
Here is a finished example that I did earlier, and this one I created with crayon. And same idea, you can press hard and dry your designs with your crayon and shade lightly to fill in the rest of the space, or you can shade lightly and then draw on top to add your patterns in. I hope you guys have fun creating Romero Brito inspired butterflies, and I can't wait to see your posts. See you soon.